Hello and welcome to my review of the Lumineth Realm Lords Alarith Spirit of the Mountain. This is a dual kit, so you do have an option of making uh, a Valinor, the Stoneheart King, instead, if you wish, and that's the model that's featured on the box there. Um, but uh, if you turn the box over, you can also see that you can make uh, a Larith with the Stoneheart World Hammer. Um, the difference is, obviously, is the Stoneheart King has the big pair of hammers and the volcano-type mountain range thing on its shoulders, and a Larith has, again, some kind of mountain range, um, but less kind of spiky, and also has these cool little um, kind of bonsai tree things as well. And the, uh, the horns are different, and the head is different, and some of the armor pieces are also different too. This model will set you back a whopping £68. It's an absolutely huge amount of money for just three sprues, um, and they're not like the big, big sprues. I built this in about two hours, give or take, on the live stream. If you'd like to see that live stream, it's available to you members, and that's the same for all of my live streams. They're available to members afterwards if you're not able to, to join in the live stream itself on the day. And that's what I try and do with the live streams, either build the new models or paint the new models or go, go through that. So I'd strongly suggest you try and join me for those. But like all of this Lumineth Realm Lord range, when I first saw the battle box as well, I thought that they, they were going to be an expensive range to, to collect. Uh, but I did promise you all that I would collect them and uh, give you the unboxings and reviews. So, uh, first things first then, uh, we'll have a look at the model itself and then we'll go through the uh, spare parts, of which there are quite a number, and uh, finally I'll go through some size comparisons. So, uh, the good news is uh, that it was fun to build. Uh, the only tricky parts really were, were these um, scroll type things and um, you know the, the mold lines weren't too bad it went together relatively well again if you saw the live stream you see that it didn't really have any issues um, the legs do hold up uh, very well on this big base it spreads the weight evenly but because it's not a really really tall model there's not that much weight to it it is very very light uh, I'd say the shoulder mounts are kind of skeletonized in a way um, but yeah you can trust it you can trust that base it's fine it passes that test uh, just in case you were wondering these small uh, hooves that are just on there it is a crying shame that there's no scenic base i mean if you choose the stoneheart king you can see a little bit of a, a scenic base popping through on the right foot and that is um, that does come with the kit but unfortunately if you build a larith it's just the base you're getting which i think is poor for a model that's let's face it 70 pounds that's a lot of money um i would have expected some kind of shrubberies or stones or mallets or broken temple something because the chances of you getting more and more of these is, is very very slim um if i was going to get any more i'd build the stone heart king and call it a day but at the moment um i don't see much motivation to do that anyway it was quite nice to build but as i say only a couple of hours or so painting will be a, a different story altogether because there's so much detail on this model everything from the peaks to the little trees that you can um shade and highlight and the leaves to um the the fine detail i don't know if you can see that in in the shoulder uh, pauldron type things uh it's got these uh, indents with these either fluffy clouds or um vine artwork a bit eldar-esque I want to say I'm not sure how they painted them whether they sprayed the whole model retributor and then dry brushed it white um I, I still am unsure how they're going to do that because the white even if you dry brush it there's a high chance that the white would um uh, pool and uh you know go into those cracks I'm thinking they probably shaded it more uh, than that I might use the shade option um, to be fair but yeah there's loads of uh, detail wherever you look on the the head on the um, world hammer itself uh, loads you know you could put the cracks in where the, the the power is just too too much there's again all the uh, uh, little details in the um, uh, leg armor and the uh, in the thigh armor on the tacits themselves which kind of look like um shields for the uh wardens um and then again on the van braces uh you've got these awesome looking flag type pole banner things i think they're more, more banners aren't they really uh on the back and then you've got like a bit of bomb armor which again could be a shield 
Uh, I, again, I like the sense of uh, movement that these models uh, portray with the, the wind blowing these um, banners to the uh, left. And uh, again, the ribbons that are on the van braces blowing to the left too. Um, maybe in future they could have some some of the trees and leaves blowing uh, in the same way. Um, but yeah, I really like the hammer in this position. I put it in the live, I did uh, put it out there on the live stream and ask people whether the hammer was better down or up. Good choice because if the hammer's up and the uh, head is facing the other way, then um, you, you're gonna obscure some of the detail. At least this way you can see all the detail and it looks uh, very, very seamless. So there you go, that's an up close and personal look at the uh, Alarith. Let's have a look at all these uh, spare parts then. Of which there are a, a magnitude of them. Uh, even though this model only has the three sprues, I was very surprised at all of the number of spare parts that you get. You get everything from this bit of scenic base, which you could use on another model, just green stuff, the hoof marks, and then, yeah, you can put a Space Marine standing on it. That's quite cool. Uh, you've got the optional, you've got the optional uh, flowing uh, loincloth thing in a jig. Um, you've got the different body, you've got different necks for it looking the, the, the opposite way. You've got different hooves. Uh, you've got a different uh, shaft for the uh, jewel hammers, um, of which uh, here they are. So you've got these uh, dual hammers. Again, loads of detail on there. They, sh they, they look like they're raw with power and crackling with um, fiery power. And then you've got uh, the head with the different horns with the mouth open, which is interesting. And uh, different arms too. And uh, the volcano type mountain range uh, optional piece and the different peaks that would go on uh, Alarith to make it into the Stoneheart King. So yeah, look at all those spare parts, a decent number. I'm not sure about the usability though. Um, maybe on some of the bases you could probably use them, but overall you're not gonna find an awful lot of use for um, these parts. Okay, so size comparisons then. I'll just compare uh, Alarith with the um, uh, sort of troop choices that you'll find with Lumineth Realmworld. So there's a stone guard. There's a sentinel uh, and warden. So it does dwarf over most of the units. Um, there's the dawn rider. Yeah, definitely dwarfs a, a dawn rider. Next to the character, unique models. So Cathalar, Light of Eltharion, and even the Stone Mage. I mean, the Stone Mage is um, probably the the, the third uh, tallest model, but uh, it's uh, taller than the Stone Mage. And then finally, Teclis, which is right here. Um, so here is Teclis, the tallest model in the range, and um, yeah, shares some aesthetics, I want to say. Uh, but overall, Alarith is not as tall as Selenar, but then you've got to imagine that you've got to think that Selenar is on this massive scenic base, and I think that's what the Alarith model is lacking some kind of extra focal point. It just looks odd on this big. Uh, base with nothing going on, a bit like the uh, Imperial Knights, I guess, uh, for those price points. But at least Teclis and Selenar, for the extra £37, which is still astronomical, uh, they do have a big focal point on the base and um, a huge sense of, and a larger uh, presence. Obviously not as much as Archeon, but still. Um, Teclis flanked by uh, Alarith and the Stoneheart King probably looked amazing, but at the same time, but at the same time, you're talking of uh, almost 250 pound in three models. So it's meant to look amazing. The tech list flanked by uh, two of these uh, Spirit of the Mountains. And the final size comparison I always like to make is just with a couple of models that you're probably more familiar with. Um, I'm not sure whether it's needed, but uh, we've got Slime Marbo in the middle, uh, Legacy Space Marine on the left, and then Primaris on the right. As you can see, it's gonna be much, much bigger than all of those. And you've now entered the final part of my review where I will go through all of the rules for uh, Alarith Spirit of the Mountain. You'll find the rules for it in uh, the brand new Lumineth Realm Lords uh, Battle Tome. Its battlefield role is a behemoth, which is a little bit different than the Stoneheart King, which is a leader and behemoth and is also unique. Unit size is one, max size is one, and the points is 340 points, making it the third most expensive unit after the Stoneheart King and the most expensive Teclis at 660. So its unit profile is a movement of six inches, save of three plus, bravery 10 and 12 wounds. That is a little bit different than uh, the Stoneheart King in that um, the Stoneheart King actually has two more wounds, it's got 14 wounds. 
It's a single model armed with a Geomantic Blast, Stoneheart World Hammer and Cloven Hooves. So the Geomantic Blast, it's one of these uh, weapons where its damage is affected by the number of wounds suffered. And uh, Age of Sigmar works the opposite way to 40k in a way. So it's one attack, three plus to hit, two plus to wound, minus two to rend and damage D6. When Alarith has between zero and two wounds suffered, it's the most effective. So, and its range is 30 inches, three to five wounds it's 25 inches, six to seven it's 20, eight to 10 it's 15 and 11 plus it's 10 inches. Now the Stoneheart World Hammer is a range three inch, attacks four, three plus to hit, two plus to wound, minus two to rend, and then the damage, again, small to large wound suffered, the damage is either five, four, three, two, and one. It's also got a shooting attack called a Stoneheart Shockwave, and again, that range is 12 inches, 10 inches, eight inches, six inches, and four inches. It's got cloven hooves, so that's range one inch, two attacks, three plus to hit, three plus to wound, rend of minus one, and a damage of two. Abilities, all but immovable. If this model does not make a charge move in your charge phase, add one to the attacks characteristic of this model's melee weapons until your next movement phase. That's brilliant. Uh, so you've now got five attacks with the world hammer and three attacks with the hooves. Ponderous advance. At the, at the end of your hero phase, you can pick one friendly Lumineth Realm Lord's elf hero within three inches of this model. If that Lumineth Realm Lord's elf hero is within three inches of this model at the start of your next hero phase, then that Lumineth Realm Lord's Elf Hero can use a command ability in that turn without spending any command points. That's good, so you get a, a nice uh, free command ability. Stoneheart Shockwave. This is the uh, shooting attack. At the start of the enemy shooting phase and at the start of any combat phase, you can pick one enemy unit within range of this model Stoneheart Shockwave ability visible to this model. The range of the Stoneheart Shockwave ability for this model is shown on the damage table above. If you do so, subtract one from hit rolls for that unit until the end of the that phase. A unit cannot be affected by this ability more than once per phase. So that's pretty good. So you can get them to uh, subtract one from their hit rolls. Stone Mage Symbiosis. When you look up a value on this model's damage table, if this model is within 12 inches of a friendly Stone Mage, this model is treated as if it, it has suffered zero wounds. That's amazing. And that's one of the reasons why it's worth getting a Stone Mage. You know, you, it's kind of like a triad of uh, excellent units here. So you get a Stone Mage, a Stone Guard, and then Spirit of the Mountain, and they all work um, in synergy uh, with each other. You know, it's worth the uh, entry fee alone for the Stone Mage just to use the Spirit of the Mountain at its uh, full potential uh, with the five damage for the Stone Heart Hammer and the 30 inch Geomantic Blast and the 12 inch uh, Shockwave. Finally, the command ability, Faith of the Mountains. You can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly Alarith elf unit wholly within 18 inches of a friendly model with this command ability. Add one to the attacks characteristic of that unit's melee weapons in the combat phase. A unit cannot benefit from this command ability more than once per combat phase, and a unit cannot benefit from this ability and the unshakable Faith of the Mountains command ability in the same phase. So again, that's pretty decent as well. So a lot of buffs there for different units. The key words, Order, Lumineth, Realm Lords, Alarith, Monster, Spirit of the Mountain. Uh, obviously, um, you know, Alarith, Elf, you can use it for the Stone Mage and the uh, Stone Guard. And uh, getting a one to the attacks characteristic again is, is fantastic. Um, it's going to bump up the, the number of attacks, um, both for the Stone Mage and for the, the Stone Guard. If you've got Stone Guard, don't leave home without a Stone Mage. If you've got a Larith, don't leave home without a Stone Mage. If you've got Stone Guard, don't leave home without the Spirit of the Mountain too. <laughs> um, so this is a great unit that has a excellent symbiosis with the other Alarith uh, units uh, in the army. How does it compare to Avelinor the Stoneheart King? Um, well, they've both got the Geomantic Blast, uh, which is exactly the same uh, for the damage and the range and uh, things like that. However, a Velenor does have two extra wounds, and that means that its wound suffers. Uh, that means its damage table is affected at uh, wound suffered of four. It's got a pair of Fire Stealer Hammers, uh, which have got six attacks instead of the World Hammer of four. But they're the same damage, but they're lesser of a, a rend. It has the all but immovable uh, ability, but uh, hit rolls on sixes with the hammers 
inflict one mortal wound in addition to the other damage. It's got Elder Wisdom instead, which works just like the Ponderous Advice. It's got Guardian of Hish, which works just like the Stoneheart Shockwave. It also has Stone Maid Symbiosis, which works the same, and it's got Unshakable Faith of the Mountains. But you can have uh, D3 units, and it's a longer range of uh, 24 inches. Also, I forgot to mention that the Fast Steel Hammers, uh, you need 3 plus to wound instead of the 2 plus for the World Hammer. So it's up to you. You've got more wounds, more attacks, and the ability to cause uh, mortal wounds with the Velenor. But of course, they are the same kit. They look slightly different in terms of the uh, mountain on their back and their headpiece and the, the weapons that they wield and some of the um, symbols on their armor. Uh, but you can't really go wrong with either of them. Uh, and they both uh, bump up the uh, Alarith uh, units, either the Stone Mage or the Stone Guard. Um, so both of them are, are a must uh, if you've got those two units as well. Anyway, what do you guys think of the model and the rules? Please do put it in the comments uh, down below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. Techless Protects.